Okay, so this is a last set of this general chemistry readiness assessment. Uh, that's the one that GCRA that you're going to take before uh, in the first week of uh, Chem 1 class in RPI. And then I'm going to solve this uh, last set, which is a number 21 to 25. And this one is essentially asking you how many grams okay, of calcium phosphate. And then let's look at the, okay, this is a calcium phosphate needed to form so many grams of calcium silicate, which is shown up here, right? So what you, what you need to know is this is a balanced equation. So what this chemical reaction means, two moles of this will produce six moles of calcium silicate. And then as you already know the, from the molar mass argument, the mole gram per mole for each one of them, if you ever calculate that, and you will see the correspondence, what used to be 2 mole versus 6 mole, now it is for gram base mole here. Okay, so, that's, so let's calculate what is a, a molar mass of calcium phosphate. Okay, so this one means uh, calcium. Calcium is, if you look at that, that's a 40, and there are three of them. And the phos phosphorus, which is a 31, and there are two of them. And oxygen, which is 16, there are eight of them. Right? And by doing so, this is a 310 gram per mole for this compound called calcium phosphate. But what about the uh, calcium silicate, which is okay, same thing, calcium, which is 40, there's a one, S silic uh, silicon, which is a 28, there's a one, and oxygen, which is a uh, uh, 16, there are three of them, okay? So if you add them together, and you will get this 116 gram per mole, okay? So that's, that's having said that, and now what you essentially expanded upon is, okay, so now this is a 6 mole, right? And that will give you uh, 696 gram. So what used to be a gram, now we, again looking at in terms of the gram ratio. So two more. This one is 620 gram. Okay. So uh, you want to convert the gram of, so therefore, This one shown up here, 172 gram of silicate, and that's a 696 grams of uh, calcium silicate, and 620 grams of uh, calcium phosphate. If you calculate that, you will get 153 gram. Okay. So that's a unit conversion from the silicate and you essentially corresponding to the silicate mass and the phosphate mass, which is the same quantity in up and down because this is essentially uh, same equivalent quantities. Now, in terms of the gram, that's the ratio. In terms of the mole, two to six mole is a ratio. And what we, what we have here Right here is a gram, so therefore I need a gram-based ratio uh, between phosphate and uh, silicate uh, ratio based on the reaction. Okay, so moving on to the number 22, and then let's look at that. How many grams of nitrogen gas occupy such a volume in liters and STP? And uh, the gas constant is given here. 
Okay. Do you remember the gas constant where you learn in the chemistry class? That is a PV equal nRT. This is an ideal gas law, and that's where the gas constant is, is being used. And this is a temperature, this is a pressure, this is a volume. And what is actually important here is uh, to understand the unit of R, and they actually show that volume is a liter, pressure unit is a ATM, temperature unit is a Kelvin. Oh, so that's the one that you, you need to use. And STP is standard temperature and the pressure. Okay. So what's the temperature? Is a zero degree C. Pressure is actually one bar or one ATM. In the modern days, this actual one bar is correct, but one ATM is also kind of used, you know, do, uh, as well. And one ATM, if you look at the reference sheet, that's a 1.013 bar. One bar is 10 to the fifth Pascal. This is something that you will learn uh, in detail. For the, this is actually more strictly true for the convenience. I will just choose this one as a uh, one ATM and the zero degree C. Obviously, you need to change it to Kelvin temperature, which is uh, uh, added by two seventy three. So, uh, from this equation, because the pressure is given and the temperature is given from the STP. And also, this is a volume. Volume is given. So I can calculate number of moles of N. And the uh, extra information shown up here is, uh, it is they say it is, it is a nitrogen gas. From the nitrogen, you know, nitrogen is a 14. And this is a 2 nitrogen molecule. So there are 2. So 28 gram per mole is a, is a molar mass. So by doing so, you can convert, uh, if you know the N as a number of moles, you can change it to a mass, which is a gram unit, vice versa by using this molar mass one. And then this question is asking how many grams, so this is what is being asked, and that's the one that we'll use once you calculate number of moles of gas there. Okay, having said them all, so now let's just plug the numbers. Pressure, one, Volume, 39.2, which is an ATM liter. I just want to show you all the no numbers. N is a mole. R is 0 0.082. And the temperature is 273 Kelvin. Okay. So then what you have here is an N that is going to be 1.75 unit is moles of nitrogen molecule and so 1.75 multiplied by 28 uh, gram per mole okay. that is a mole just wanted to refresh your memories this was a mole that was a molar mass so cancel out and you ended up getting uh, 49.0 Gram. Okay, so that's the answer shown up here. Okay, so let's moving on to this number twenty-three. This is also looks like a, a gas law is needed and because they are talking about. Okay, it is a sample of oxygen gas. I get that, and the temperatures and pressures and it has a volume. Okay, that's good. So it is a container, and the, the volume is defined, pressure is defined, uh, and the temperature is defined. So what's you still you still remember PV equal nRT? So you can calculate n is a remaining constant using the ideal gas law. It's prefixed. But now the question is asking, what is a volume? New volume when you change its temperature to a new one and the pressure is the same so is the pressure is the same and so okay so i can rewrite this equation 
saying that okay n is fixed is a closed system and then there's a PV or T and uh, even R is a constant okay? so uh, what is constant and, and then we're going to write uh, 0 0.5 ATM volume is 11.41 and then R and the temperature if you have this 41 and that was that is a 314.4 Kelvin okay and 0 0.5 volume is what you need and then if you look at the minus 10 degree 10.8 degree C that's a 200 62.2 Kelvin okay and multiply by R okay so R is gone and the 0.5 is gone so this therefore the volume is essentially 11.41 multiply by 6 Two six two point two three one four point four liter. Right? If you do that, nine point five two liter is an answer uh, for the new one. So essentially, by changing the temperature from forty one point four degrees C, keeping the same uh, temperature, uh, same pressure the volume is going to be smaller because of the new temperature is lower 10.8 so if you have a balloon okay, and then if you make it colder the volume balloon will shrink and that's what is a newer volume is smaller that's what this is about okay uh, number 24 let's read the problem okay pressure is given uh, Krypton gas and then this confined uh, volume so volume is there and the temperature is there okay pressure volume temperature is there how many moles so this n is a question a uh, present in this container this problem is actually quite easy once again PV equal NRT so n is PV RT and then pressure is 0 0.821 volume is 19.2 0 0.082 and this one is uh, close to 303 actually so 303 Kelvin okay so if you once again I just wanted to recap once more this is a unit of ATM and this is a liter and that's my choice so therefore I can happily use this R which is a unit of canceling unit right so what you have left with is whatever number you will have will be a unit of a mole and that mole is 0 0.364 okay that's the end and so this is an answer. And you know this this information of this Krypton gas is not being really useful because uh, if it doesn't matter the what kind of gas, the number of moles is, is to be the same. So if somebody changed the Krypton to I don't know argon or neon, still the answer is the same number of moles is the same. So yes. okay. So the last one is a pH. Do you remember the pH is a measure of acidity in the system and the pH if you're looking at the reference sheet uh, you'll find this equation minus log 10 H plus and in or some people will write H10 H3 O plus because you know, this S is always in the basis of aqueous solution, so either these two are the same. 
and now this is an HCL solution and we want you we kind of want you to know what's the meaning of the, this equation so HCl which is a strong acid so they fully dissociate into the H plus and Cl minus and sometimes uh, I, I -E. this is a initial change and equilibrium so you guys will remember this uh, if not then don't worry that we'll refresh your mind and we'll, we'll go through this in the class mm, in the initial condition there's a point two zero mole and you have nothing in the beginning and because of this is a strong acid we can fully dissociate it and then at, as a consequence by losing them all you fully generate H plus and fully generated Cl minus so almost none left and then the, you have fully generated this and you have fully generated that so therefore this is a key piece of information because that is a concentration of H plus so therefore in this case is pH is minus log n H plus which is a uh, minus log 10.2 do that there will be a 0 0.70 and that's the answer for this okay all right so this one is a uh, concludes uh, the, the answer for this what we call the general chemistry readiness assessment we just want to know where you guys are standing before you take the chem 1 course at RPI and this is professor Yu and he has thanks for listening to my uh, my solving the problem set.